Hey everyone, in this video we're going to solve word problems using sequences. In order to do that, we need to make sure we know how to write the explicit formula of both an arithmetic and a geometric sequence, as well as be confident in identifying what type of sequence we're dealing with. Our first example, a theater has 9 seats in the first row, 12 seats in the second row, and 15 seats in the third row. If there are 23 rows in the theater, how many seats would be in the last row? First thing with any word problem is to define the variable. So in this case, we're going to let n, because we're dealing with sequences, be equal to the number of rows. Now, if we write out this sequence, it would be 9, 12, 15, continuing on. Looking at the terms of this sequence, we should notice that we have to add 3 to go from one term to the next. So plus 3, plus 3. So what does that tell us? It tells us that we have an arithmetic sequence with a common difference of 3, and the first term is 9. Now remember, the explicit formula for an arithmetic sequence looks like point slope. So we can express a sub 1 equals 9 as the point 1, 9. And then we would have a sub n minus 9. The common difference is the slope, so 3 times n minus 1. So a sub n equals 9 plus 3 times n minus 1. Now that we have our explicit formula, we can use it to answer the question of how many seats would be in the last row, the 23rd row. So n equals 23. We can substitute that in for n, so a sub 23 equals 9 plus 3 times 23 minus 1. So a sub 23 equals 9 plus 3 times 22. So a sub 23 equals 9 plus 66, which is 75. So how many seats would be in the last row of this theater? There are going to be 75 seats. Hey, just to walk through the process one more time, we started by defining the variable n. We figured out that it was an arithmetic sequence, so we came up with the common difference and the first term that they gave us, created the explicit formula, and then plugged in to answer the question. Our next example, Tommy is $40 saved in his piggy bank. During a snowstorm, he decides to shovel his neighbor's driveways for $15 per driveway. If he shovels eight driveways, how much money will he have in his piggy bank? Okay, so start by defining the variable. So we'll let n be equal to the number of driveways. Number of driveways. In this case, he's charging $15 per driveway. So he'd be adding $15 every driveway that he shovels. Well, adding 15 to go from one term to the next, that would be an arithmetic sequence. So we have an arithmetic sequence. Common difference is 15. Now, they told us that he has $40 saved in his piggy bank. But what term of the sequence would that be? Remember, n is the number of driveways. Well, that $40, he has not shoveled any driveways. Zero driveways. Okay, so what would n be? n would be zero then. So written in subscript notation, we have a sub 0 equals 40. So the first term they gave us, which is the 40, is a sub 0. Now, we've seen a few sequences where this was the case, where we started at a sub 0, or the 0th term. They were rare, but this is another example of a sequence where it makes sense to start at the 0 term, and then first term, second term, third term. Because again, we define n to be the number of driveways. He has shoveled zero driveways to get that $40. Okay, it's arithmetic, so we're going to write that point slope form again. So 0, 40 would be our point. So a sub n minus 40 equals 15 times n minus 0. Well, that actually is going to clean up nicely for us. So a sub n equals 40 plus 15n, right? n minus 0 is just n. So now we want to figure out how much he would have if he shoveled 8 driveways. So that's n equals 8. 
So a sub 8 equals 40 plus 15 times 8. So a sub 8 equals 40 plus 80, 40, 120. So a sub 8 equals 160. So how much money would he have in his piggy bank? He would have $160. Okay. The new part here was that a sub 0. And hopefully it made sense the way I described it in the fact that he had shoveled zero driveways to get that $40. At the first game of the season, the varsity basketball team had 25 fans. If the number of fans doubles each game, how many fans will be at the fifth game of the season? Okay, so we're going to let n be equal to the number of games. The number of fans doubles each game. So we'd be multiplying by 2 to get the number of fans from game to game. Well, that would be a common ratio, multiplying over and over again. So that means we have a geometric sequence. Geometric. As we just said, the common ratio, if we're doubling, we're multiplying by 2. So the common ratio is 2. The first game, 25 fans. N is the number of games, so A sub 1 equals 25. Now we're going to write the explicit formula for the geometric sequence. Remember, that's modeled after an exponential function. So A sub N equals 25 is the coefficient. The base is 2 to the n minus 1. I'd shift right to the 1 because a sub 1. We want that coefficient to be the first term. Now we want to know how many fans are going to be at the fifth game. So that's n equals 5. So a sub 5 equals 25 times 2 to the 5 minus 1. So a sub 5 equals 25 times 2 to the 4th a sub 5 equals 25 times 16, which is 400. So how many fans at the fifth game? There are going to be 400 fans. Now, some of you probably looked at this question and said, well, can I multiply by 2 five times? It doesn't seem that hard. And I would agree with you. But what if I asked you for the 10th or the 20th game of the season? It would make a lot more sense to take our time to create the explicit formula and then plug into that. On top of that, a lot of times these word problems will first ask you to create the formula and then use the formula to answer a question such as how many fans will be at the fifth game. So it's important that we know how to create this formula to use it to answer the question. Charlie is observing the population of cats in the alley behind his apartment. He observed 32 cats during the first week, and his next three observations were 30, 28, and 26. Determine how many cats he would observe after 56 days. Well, his observations are after the first week, second week, third week, fourth week. So we're going to let n be equal to the number of weeks. If we wrote out this sequence, so we have 32, 30, 28, 26, continuing on. So looking at the terms of the sequence, we're decreasing by 2 each time. So subtract 2, subtract 2, subtract 2. So that means we have an arithmetic sequence. Arithmetic sequence with a common difference of negative 2. His observation during the first week was 32. So a sub 1 equals 32. Right, n is the number of weeks, 32 is the first week. Arithmetic, we want to express the first term as a point, so 1, 32. It's not a very good 3, let's fix that. 1, 32. So a sub n minus 32 equals negative 2 times n minus 1. a sub n equals 32 minus 2 times n minus 1. Now, determine how many cats he would observe after 56 days. But n is in weeks, so first thing we need to do is convert the 56 days to weeks. So 56 days, 
So we can do a little dimensional analysis here. So one week is seven days. So the days would cross out. Seven and 56 can be simplified. That would be eight, that would be one. So 56 days is eight weeks. Nice little dimensional analysis review built in here as well. Okay, so we're going to plug eight in for n, so n equals eight. So a sub eight equals 32 minus two times eight minus one. A sub eight equals 32 minus two times seven. A sub eight equals 32 minus 14, which is 18. So the question was, how many cats would he observe? So the answer is 18 cats on that eighth week. All right. A ball is dropped off a building from a height of 128 feet. After it hits the ground, it bounces to three fourths of its previous height. How high to the nearest tenth will the ball bounce after the sixth bounce? Okay, so we're going to let n be equal to the number of bounces. Now, after each bounce, it goes to three-fourths of its previous height. So we multiply the previous height by three-fourths each time. What is that? That means that three-fourths is the common ratio. So we have a geometric sequence with a common ratio of three-fourths. Now, n is the number of bounces. We drop the ball from 128 feet. Hasn't bounced yet zero bounces, ball was at 128 feet. So in our subscript notation, a sub zero equals 128, right? No bounces, we're at 128 feet. So now we can use these two pieces of information to write our explicit formula. So a sub n equals 128 will be the coefficient, three fourths will be the base, and then we're going to raise it just to the n. Well, technically the n minus zero, I can write that out because that's the subscript here, but really that's just a sub n equals 128 times 3 fourths to the n, right? because this isn't the first term, it's the zero term. So now that we have the explicit formula created, we are going to plug in six, Right, sixth bounce, so n equals six. So a sub six equals 128 times three fourths to the six. Now, when it says to the nearest 10, it means we're gonna need the calculator here. So we have 128 times three divided by four to the sixth power and says to the nearest 10, so 22.781, so 22.781, and a few more decimals after that. So to the nearest 10th, that's this place, we're looking at that digit, so a sub six rounded would be 22.8. So to the nearest 10th, how high will the ball bounce? We're in feet. So 22.8 feet. Okay, so this one, we needed our calculator to give a final answer. We had to round it. And we also had another example where we started at n equals zero, not n equals one. And that's gonna happen more frequently in the word problems because if we look at something like this, right? 128 feet is where it started at. It hasn't bounced yet. And we define n to be the number of bounces. So n would be zero at 128 feet. Write a formula to find the nth term in the sequence illustrated below. So we have all these orange circles. The first term has three orange circles, next six orange circles, and then 12 orange circles, and then 24 orange circles. So let's write out the numbers so we can look at that. So three orange circles here, six orange circles, 12, and then 24. Okay, so we want to find the formula for the nth term of this sequence, right? Imagine it keeps continuing. 
So if we look at the terms of the sequence, 3, 6, 12, 24, to go from one term to the next, we're multiplying by 2 each time. So that means we have a common ratio and a geometric sequence. Okay, so the sequence that we were given is geometric. The common ratio was 2. The first term, a sub 1, was 3. So now we can write the explicit formula. So a sub n equals 3 times 2 to the n minus 1. And we can use this formula to find any term of the sequence. So the key here is any time that you're given an illustrated sequence, write out the numbers that are being represented. In this case, it's orange circles, so we just wrote the amount of orange circles, and then we worked off of the numeric sequence. So we looked at a bunch of word problems using both the arithmetic and the geometric explicit formulas, and then plugged in to answer the actual question that we were being asked. And then we finished the video with an illustrated sequence that we wrote out numerically and then created the formula for. So now try a few word problems on your own. Make sure to define that variable, create that formula, and then plug in. Click the Amazon link down below for my algebra workbook so you can practice on your own. Give the video a like, and before you go, click that subscribe button so you can see more videos just like this. Thanks for watching.